I'd like to tell you a story about a couple of two-dimensional beings living two-dimensional lives in a couple of two-dimensional universes. Here is Mr. Red. And here is Mr. Blue. Now their lives are pretty similar. They both live in two dimensions. As far as they know, they live in a plane. But there's a very big difference between their two universes. And that difference is that in Blue's universe, it turns out that if he goes far enough in any direction, he will return to the point he started at. Now this distance may be unfathomably large in his universe, it could be trillions of light years, but it has the property, unbeknownst to him maybe, that if he goes far enough in any direction, he will return to his starting location. Now as far as they know, their universes are pretty much the same thing. They're both living on a 2D plane. In other words, they're both living on a two-dimensional manifold. All that means is that locally, small enough area of that two-dimensional manifold, it looks like a plane. But there's a big difference between the natures of their universes. And that is, Mr. Blue's universe as a whole, from the outside, cannot exist in two dimensions. And that's because Mr. Blue, topologically, is living on the surface of a sphere. Now, the surface of a sphere and the plane, the 2D plane, are both two-dimensional manifolds, but topologically they are very different. Naturally, I can put a 2D plane in two dimensions. I mean, two dimensions is a 2D plane. The Euclidean space of two dimensions is a 2D plane. I could take Red's universe and plop it right in there, and that's all fine and dandy. But I cannot do that for Mr. Blues, simply because of that property. Now, the, the property of having a path that you can go one direction and get back to where you started, that's called a closed geodesic. And the number of closed geodesics on a space says a lot about it geometrically and a little bit about it topologically, depending on the details. But in any case, they are living in very different universes. Now, Mr. Blue's universe, as a 2D manifold, is a closed manifold. It doesn't extend in any direction indefinitely, because it's a sphere, and at the same time it doesn't have any kind of edge, any kind of border. And it is in fact generally true that a closed n-dimensional manifold cannot embed an n-dimensional space. So this two-dimensional manifold, which is closed, cannot be put into a plane. It cannot be put into two dimensions. Now, when I say we can't take this two-dimensional universe or this two-dimensional manifold that Blue is living in and put it into three dimensions, what I mean is that there is no embedding from the sphere to the two-dimensional plane or two-dimensional Euclidean space. And what is an embedding? Well, an embedding is if I have this function f that takes the sphere, which I'll just call s, into the two-dimensional plane and it has to be a homeomorphism onto its image. So that's what an embedding is. Now there's a few things to unravel when we say this. So we have this function f and it's going to take the sphere into the plane and it has to be a homeomorphism onto its image. What that means is that I have to take the sphere s and bring it into the plane in a continuous way, it has to preserve distinct points. In other words, if two points are distinct on the sphere, and I plug them into this function, they have to remain distinct when they go into the plane. And then we have to be able to reverse this. It has to be bicontinuous. So it goes onto its image in a continuous way, all distinct points are preserved, and we can pull it back to the sphere in another continuous way. That is what it means to have an embedding from the sphere to the plane. Now this is impossible. And why is it impossible? Well, in fact, it's impossible. You're witnessing it being impossible. You're seeing this on a two-dimensional screen. And if I hold a sphere out, you, I can't show you the whole thing. I can only show you one side of it. And that's because when we take this sphere and we put it into two dimensions, we are gluing points together. There are points on this sphere that are distinct. And then whenever I try to express the sphere in two dimensions, they collapse. In other words, the sphere has to self-intersect after it goes through any function that takes it to the plane in a continuous way that preserves anything about it, topologically speaking. And that is why it is impossible for us to embed the sphere or Blue's universe into the 2D plane. And again, this is true for any closed two-dimensional manifold. And I think a good intuition about that is that the sphere as a two-dimensional manifold being closed, it sort of encloses a three-dimensional volume. And so I cannot put that into a 2D plane without it self-intersecting. 
All right, we now know a thing. Closed manifolds of dimension n cannot be put into n-dimensional Euclidean space. They can't. It requires one more dimension at least. You can just tack on one extra dimension required to express a closed n-dimensional manifold. We all know that we can put a sphere in three dimensions, right? We can do that. So that's why we need three dimensions to actually observe Blue's universe as a whole, as these, you know, omnipotent three-dimensional beings that we are. We can look at its universe, behold it <laughs> in all of its glory <laughs> because we are three-dimensional. However, Red's universe just sits in a plane just fine. And Red's universe may not literally be a plane, but it is topologically a plane in this case. So it may be a little wavy or something, but it is a plane. And we can just smash it right into two dimensions, which we can't do for Mr. Blue. Now let's talk about Mr. Yellow. <sighs> not a very attractive 2D creature. Mr. Yellow's universe is quite like Mr. Blue's, with one exception. He cannot go in any direction and return to where he was. But he can go in one direction and return to where he was in a straight line. But the thing is, when he does so, he finds that he has been reversed. And where is Mr. Yellow living? What kind of manifold? Well, he can return to where he was, but he is going to be reversed. And he can't go in every direction. So that tells us that he is living on the surface of a Mobius band. That's where he lives. When he goes around it, he returns right where he was before, but he is now reversed. And remember, this is a two-dimensional creature, so he does not return on the other side of the Mobius band. There's only XY coordinates. He is exactly where he was before, but his orientation has been flipped. So what a weird universe for him to live in. There's no way we live in anything like that, right? Now, just take a moment to appreciate how weird this must be for Mr. Yellow here. As a two-dimensional being living on this two-dimensional surface, which is locally a plane, there's nothing he can do to manipulate himself or move around in a way that will flip his orientation like this. He cannot reflect himself around something. It's impossible. So this is a very weird place for him to live in. And why is this such a weird thing? And why is this impossible? Well, what does it mean to reflect something. When we take a two-dimensional object and we reflect it around a line or whatever, what are we doing? Well, as omnipotent three-dimensional gods, we're really just rotating it through that third dimension that it does not have access to. That's what a reflection is. It is a rotation through another dimension that this, you know, creature, object, does not have access to and doesn't exist in. So, with that being said, it's pretty clear that if a surface or a manifold is non-orientable, that is also going to require one more dimension for an embedding. Now, notice that the Mobius band is not closed. It has an edge, which is not included in the manifold for you know, definitional reasons, but it has something that we can identify as having a border or an edge that's not there, but could be there. You get it. So this manifold, the Mobius band, is not closed and it is also not orientable. It needs one more dimension. That's why we can behold it in three dimensions. But if I try to put it on a plane, which I guess I'm doing anyway, because you're watching this on a screen, this is so weird. If I put it in two dimensions, we have the same problem as we did with the sphere. Distinct points do not remain distinct after we plug it through that continuous function. Can't happen. It's going to self-intersect. So we need three dimensions for a Mobius band. All right, so what do we know so far? Well, so far, first we know that an n-dimensional manifold that is closed cannot be embedded in n-dimensional space. It needs another dimension. So the best we can do is Rn plus 1. And we also know that if a n-dimensional manifold is non-orientable, we need an extra dimension. Same thing. So, let's introduce Mr. Green. What's Mr. Green's universe like? Well, Mr. Green is living on a two-dimensional manifold where he can, like Mr. Yellow, go in some direction, return where he was before, but his orientation is reversed. But, here's the difference. He can also go in some other direction, maybe infinitely many other directions, and return to where he was, 
but his orientation was not reversed. So where is he living? Well, he's living on what's called a Klein bottle, and this is the best I can do for you in this three-dimensional existence. And that's because Mr. Green's manifold is closed. It doesn't have any kind of edge. He can always return to where he was before, but it's also non-orientable because he can return to where he was before with a reversal. So what that means in total is that his manifold, his two-dimensional manifold, is closed, so we need plus one dimensions, and is non-orientable, so we need another dimension. I cannot embed Mr. Green's two-dimensional universe in three dimensions. I'm not powerful enough. I cannot express this in three dimensions. I need to be a four-dimensional being to express this. And you can see this actually occurring mathematically in the three-dimensional model of the Klein bottle, which is really called an immersion. It's where we relax the idea of an embedding and allow it to self-intersect. And that's why the Klein bottle intersects itself right there, but it doesn't actually. The four-dimensional or the 4D embedding of the Klein bottle does not intersect here. We just have to make it intersect there to express it in three dimensions. Just like if I draw a cube on a piece of paper, it intersects in places that we, we all know it doesn't really. And I can't give you the Mobius strip in two dimensions either because it will intersect itself. So this surface, as a three-dimensional model, intersects itself where it doesn't actually, whenever it's embedded in four dimensions. And so a creature living on this will pass through this not real intersection as if it wasn't there. It's not really there. It's just a limitation of this three-dimensional world that we live in. All right, so in summary, we know that a closed manifold needs one more dimension, a non-orientable manifold needs one more dimension, so if something's both closed and non-orientable, it needs two more dimensions. But enough about these two-dimensional creatures. What about my needs? Let's talk about me. I exist in three-dimensional space. So what are some three-dimensional manifolds? Well, there's, of course, normal three-dimensional space, which we probably live in, I think. That's comforting to me, at least. But there are examples, hypothetically, of course, of three-dimensional manifolds that are closed. For example, um, the sphere. The surface of the sphere is a two-dimensional manifold. That's a closed manifold. And just as that is the boundary of a three-dimensional ball, a sphere with all the insides, if we have a four-dimensional ball, its surface is a three-manifold, which is a three-dimensional sphere. And that would be an example of a three-dimensional manifold that is closed. But we don't live in that, of course. OK, well, what about a non-orientable three-dimensional manifold? Well, if we just have the Klein bottle sitting there in four dimensions, I'm doing my best. It encloses a three-dimensional manifold, or it contains a three-dimensional volume. So it's just sitting there with the insides. It's called the solid Klein bottle, which is a three-dimensional manifold. Now, it is still not orientable, as the boundary of an orientable manifold is always orientable, which the Klein bottle is not. So here we have a three-dimensional manifold that is not orientable, but it's not closed anymore, as it now has Instead of an edge, we're now looking for a containing surface, which is the Klein bottle. So it is not closed, but it is non-orientable. So plus one dimension on this three manifold gives us embedding in the fourth dimension. So it's just the Klein bottle sitting there in four dimensions with all the insides. So that is an example of a three-dimensional non-orientable manifold that we could possibly live in. So what kind of manifold am I living in? Or what kind of manifold are you living in? Well, we don't know, because these manifolds just have to locally look like three-dimensional space. We don't really know the whole shape of the universe. We don't know if maybe we go in one direction far enough, we end up back where we started. We, we just don't know. Because, I mean, to know that, we'd have to, you know, comprehend the whole universe to, to make sure that things like that don't exist. And, you know, with all due respect, it's a big ass universe. So we don't really know if the three dimensional manifold that we move around in is closed, then it cannot be observed or embedded into three dimensional space. Only a four dimensional being could comprehend our universe in full and, and look at it and say, behold, here's this this little universe of these three-dimensional beings, if they could even interact with us. I mean, I don't think we could perceive a two-dimensional being, so who knows? And likewise, if our universe is non-orientable and we can return to a location with our, our, we're flipped. I mean, think about it. We can't do that. I cannot move around in a way that makes me reverse. That requires a fourth dimension for us to be rotated through. 
So that leads to the next natural question. Is it possible that we move around in a three-dimensional manifold that is not embeddable in three dimensions? Could it be that there are four-dimensional beings out there that are hypothesizing about the kind of manifolds that a three-dimensional being might experience? Could it be that only these four-dimensional beings could observe our universe as a whole? Could it be that one of these four-dimensional beings could take us and rotate us through a fourth spatial dimension that we don't have access to, which would flip our orientation? Well, the answer is that this is fun to think about, but no, of course not. This cannot be true. And it's because, you see, three-dimensional beings like us are special. We perceive the universe and experience the universe as it truly is. You see, the concept of us taking one of these two-dimensional beings, so unaware, so adorable, and rotating it through that third spatial dimension that it doesn't have access to, that's a sound concept. We can demonstrate it. Here it is. This makes sense. However, there's no way to fathomably understand what it would be like for a fourth dimensional being to rotate me through a fourth spatial dimension to reverse my orientation. The concept does not make sense. In fact, I can't even represent it visually to you because it, it just, it's just nonsense. See, what I can do is use video editing to just reverse my orientation but that's just an instantaneous change. So that's definitely not how we would perceive a four dimensional being rotating us through a fourth spatial dimension that we have no access to. And in fact, this doesn't even make sense as a concept. I mean, there's nothing I could do besides just instantly flipping myself horizontally or vertically. There's no other way to conceive of this. Well, I mean, I suppose another thing I could do is take my scale in one direction and change it continuously from 100% to negative 100%, and that would also flip me in a more continuous way. Wait a minute.